All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tuesday version of Deep Dive Analysis. This is when we go deep, deep into the numbers and try to figure out exactly what it is we're trying to accomplish. Today, we're gonna to be talking through quiz number two. Everybody had problems with quiz number two, and I'm under Mr. Ray, are you, are, are, are you making it too difficult for them? Uh, are you trying to throw curveballs at them? What are you doing? You, you got everybody all flabbergasted and frustrated. Well, today, I'm gonna take time, we're gonna dive into these numbers, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to ask questions along the way. We're not just gonna be typing and chatting today. Uh, we're gonna be live taking questions and making sure everybody understands every piece of this puzzle uh, before we leave here today, no matter how long it, well, however long it takes, if we have to spend 20 minutes on one slide, by golly, that's what we're going to do. So uh, everybody, tighten up your seat belts and uh, let's get ready to roll. So here's the answers uh, to the quiz. Don't worry about trying to look at them right now. I'm going to dissect this one by one. I got 10 slides today, so we're going to go through those. And I'm going to make sure that everybody on this line understands every single number uh, on this on these slides before it's over. So if you if you don't have an answer today, it's because you didn't step up and ask the question. All right, I'm giving everybody ample opportunity today. We're wide open. We're going into the dirty, nasty details uh, on this on this call today. So here are our assumptions. Let me talk through them. Make sure everybody understands them before we get started. So my assumption is 100, 100K for the ARV. I'm using 80% as the LTV, that's the loan to value because that's typically what I can get banks to loan on, right? 80%. Uh, this particular loan, I said it was gonna be for 15 years, 6%. That's pretty much what they're offering out there in the marketplace today, so that's consistent. I'm saying only 5K in repairs, and this is where I threw you guys for a loop. I gave you a dollar amount and didn't give you a percentage. So therefore, you couldn't use the little cheat uh, Excel spreadsheet that uh, Rashim had put together for y'all, right? You had to actually do this calculation by hand. Ah, Mr. Ray threw one in on y'all. All right. And then we have closing costs. Now, you need to assume any time that we have closing costs in the future that those closing costs are going to be included in the, uh, in, in, in the loan. So whenever you see closing costs, always lump those in the loan. The banks will always do that. And then you have the uh, annual taxes, insurance vacancy, and repair. So right now, let's stop and see if we've got any questions on the assumptions. Hey, Ray, it's not so much a question, this is Vaughn, but a comment, and it's just my lack of awareness, but the, the down payment and the closing costs um, uh, tripped me up in regards to how to manage those, because right. in my mind, they seem similar, but they are ma they're handled in a different way. So down payment um, is always going to be money coming out of your pocket. Closing costs can come out of your pocket, but they can also be included in the loan. That's one way to remember. So in the future, I'll tell you where, what I want you to do with the closing costs. I want to, I want to say you're going to pay cash for it or you're going to put it in the loan. That way that will help with some of that confusion. Thank you. What else? Deep dive, baby. Let's go. What you got? Don't leave this slide until you understand what these assumptions are. All right, sound looking like everybody's good. All right, so we're going to be solving for maximum allowable offer, monthly mortgage payment, net cash flows, net operating income, and return on investment. And I'm going to break those down and talk about what each one of those really mean, not just the numbers, what's the rationale uh, behind that. So I've, I've went through this before, but it's worth going through it again because everybody seems to get tripped up on after repair value, right? After repair value is just the value of the property after it's been improved, renovated, or fixed up. It's sometimes called the appraised value of the property, or some people say it's the market value of the property, but it's simply determined it's the price of the property based on similar homes in that neighborhood that are selling uh, today or have sold uh, in the last six months. 
So any question on after repair value? After repair value, I should have that stamped on your forehead by now because I use that quite a bit. All right, keep going. You guys said, if, if you don't stop me, we're gonna keep going. Loan to value. Now, I think this is where we get tripped up sometime also. So loan to value is nothing more than whatever percentage of the ARV that the bank is willing to loan on investment property. Typically, uh, banks are loaning 70 to 80%. So that's what I always use whenever I'm looking at loan to value. I know that my bank will loan me 80% of whatever the uh, after repair value is. And so in our, uh, in our assumption, we said that uh, we're going to assume the bank will loan 80%. And so we take our 80% times the 100K, which is the ARV. That means that loan to value, the bank will loan me is 80K. Any questions? Hey, Ray, this is Don. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, can you run it back real quick? Uh, I guess I should chime in earlier. But when you state for the closing costs, I get the analogy of the numbers that you're running with adding it into the loan. The right. part that tripped me up is like when you added the 10000 down payment and the 3000 saying whether it's coming out of your pocket, how do you figure that out? Because that's the part that's getting me is where do you put those numbers in? Because if it's coming out of your own pocket, it's not being financed into the loan. I mean, I'm getting mixed up with that. Okay, uh, so I, I did clarify that for you got on, Don. And so always assume that the down payment – in this case was $10,000, it's always gonna come out of your pocket. If I say down payment, that's cash over, that's money coming out of your pocket. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, and so then when I talk about closing costs, you have the option. The bank will give you the option. Do you wanna pay that out of your, your money with your cash or would you like to finance that into the loan? And usually, I like to finance that into the loan. And so I didn't tell you what to do with that in this particular uh, quiz. So in the future, just assume that the closing costs are always gonna be financed into the loan and the down payment is always gonna come out of your pocket. Everybody good? All righty. So now let's go to the next one we're going to solve for, which is the maximum allowable offer. This one seems to trip a lot of people up too. So we just talked about the LTV percentage. That's always determined by us, right? It's just based on whatever we know the banks will lend us on, right? 80% or 70%, whatever it is, somewhere between 70, 80%. So the maximum allowable offer is always whatever percentage of that after repair value less whatever repairs that you have going into that property. That's always going to be your maximum allowable offer because it says two things. One is how much the bank is willing to loan and two, how much my repairs are. That, Mr. Seller, is all I can offer you on these particular properties. I'm, I'm sticking with that because I know the banks will loan me on that. So if we look at our example, uh, our assumption was 100K was the uh, ARV. The repairs were 5K. So we know the loan to value was 80%. So we take our 100K, which is the ARV, multiply it times the 80, and we get 80K as what uh, uh, the loan would be. But we got to make sure we add in our repairs, or excuse me, subtract our repairs. That way we know now we can cover both our down payment and the cost of the property when we refinance it. So that 75K is the max that we can offer on this property using uh, the criteria that I use. Any questions? So Ray, when, when you say the 100K, right? Right. You're getting that from the comparables in the neighborhood uh, for what the house could possibly go for, right? Yeah, that's the ARV. Okay. All right, everybody still with me? Ask your questions now. This is this is your time. Get me right here right now. Don't hold you hold your peace. 
I want to make sure it's clear as mud. All right? Hey, hey, and just to piggyback on that real quick, Ray, that ARV, so say for instance, when you when you look at on uh Zillow and they got the house for a hundred thousand. Right. Um, you're still going off of what the other comps are, what you think that you could possibly get for, right? Yeah, Zillow is usually pretty close. You know, a lot of people, they try to get an exact ARV. Well, you're not going to get an exact. For me, if I got a $100,000 house, if I can get within $5,000 of the ARV, if it's $100,000, 105000 doesn't make a lot of difference to me, right? But if it, if, if uh, Zillow is saying 100000 and everything I look up on Comparable says 80000 then I got a problem. Then I got to figure out where the issue is. But as long as they're close, uh, I'm, I'm good with going with the Zillow estimate on, in most cases. So say, for instance, if the house is like needs work and, and, and Zillow got it actually for 50000 but you see the house next to it is 100 you see the house next to it is 100 then you should assume that once you fix this up, it's going to be worth 100 If it has the same bedrooms, it has the same bath, it has a two-car garage, if, it has, if it's a similar property, you can make that assumption. It has You, you can't... Uh, compare a five bedroom to a, uh, a two bedroom. So just make sure your bedrooms are good and that they've been recent sales or a recent times those properties have been on the market, you should be good. All right. What else? All right, so we know what the maximum allowable offer. That's something that we can determine what the LTV is. We, we got that number because we know what the banks are going to loan them. All right, let's go. So we know 75K is the max we can offer on this property. Now, the 1% rule, pretty easy. 1% or whatever your gross rent is, that's what you should be able to get in rent for that property. That's a rule that as investors we use. Now that's not a hard fast rule, but for me, it usually tells me whether this property is gonna make me money or not. Now, some people like to use the purchase price, the price that they pay for the property and not the ARV. I think that uh, that can short sell you and get you in trouble because you wanna, you wanna, you're basing that on a lower number always. Your purchase price, if you're an investor, should always be less than your uh, ARV, right? Because we're saying we're not, we're buying everything below below market. We're buying things uh, 75, 60, 80 percent below market. So. I always use this as a rule of thumb, 1% of the ARV. So challenge me on that. Who's got some questions, some concerns? So when, when should you use the 2% rule? Or is it just because we're in Oklahoma and the 1% is this guy? What's, what's the 2% rule? Well, 2% is just doubling basically what that is. Why would you do that? Well, everything that I've ever researched actually showed the 2%. Well, I, I've never, I've never heard of two percent rule, because that means that this property had to bring in two thousand dollars, and it ain't never a hundred thousand dollar property in Oklahoma City is not going to bring in two thousand dollars worth of rent. I promise you that. Well, yeah, that's why I was saying is it probably because we're in Oklahoma, one percent is probably where we're at in our market. No, I think that's everything I've ever seen. Eric is one percent. I've never. You show me, send me something that says two percent. Okay. All right. What else? Who else has got something? Hey, Ray, yeah. would, that, would that apply to mobile homes as well, too? I don't. I've never done mobile homes. I'm, I'm not sure somebody else on the line may be able to respond to that. Uh, I'm a one-trick pony. I'm a buy and hold single family home type of guy. So I've uh, never done mobile home park, but Johnny Whitfield, was talking to me about one he was looking at one time. It sure looked good when he when he looked at the number. So if Johnny's on here. He may he may have some input. Okay, cause I uh, went to look at one today and everything looked really good. It was a, a, a remodel and everything like that, and they were just about to put it on the market. And so it looked really good. The community out more looked good, and so. As I've been just kind of researching, I, I was just wondering if I could apply those same rules to mobile homes. But okay. yeah, I, I don't know because you know, mobile home to me is just a little bit different animal because you basically are just leasing uh, the hookup. Or are you saying are the mobile homes there too? You you gonna lease the mobile homes also? 
Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I would purchase it and then lease it out. And uh, man, it seems like to be a pretty good deal. And then, you know, they'll pay you and then they'll pay a fee to the actual mobile home park. But so far, the numbers look pretty good, but I hadn't got all the way down to all the details, but I was just curious if I could apply the same rules. To yeah, it. I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure I'm not blind, but uh, hey, let's talk. Can y'all hear me? Time. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Hey, can I say something? Yeah. So I used to own eight trailers and a trailer park. Uh, my mom still has two trailers that she rents out in the trailer park I used to own. <clears throat> she bought one of them for $600, moved it over there, spent about $1,500 remodeling it, and then rents it out for $750 a month. Okay. The, problem with, the problem with mobile homes is, uh, one, you can't depreciate it because it's not real property. Like you Okay, uh, Jason, I'm going to have to stop you right here. The mobile home discussion is going to have to come on another day. So okay. uh, I apologize. I got to get through these slides. We got That's some right. serious numbers here we got to get through. So you guys got any more questions around these numbers here? This ARV, this, uh, this gross rent, 1% rule. That's what I use. Don't know if it apply to mobile homes or not. We can talk about that offline. Any questions before I go? All right, so monthly mortgage payment. All right, so we've already solved for our maximum allowable offer. We know that's 75K. We know that uh, our down payment was 10K. So we know initially we got 65K that we're going to want the bank to finance because we're going to put 10,000 of our own money in the game. In this particular example, I said we're going to have closing costs, so we're going to add the 3K to the 65K. So we're going to finance 68K. And if you put this into your amortization schedule, 68K is 6% for 15 years, should come out to 573.85. Any questions? All right, so everybody got that one then, so we good. Hey, Ray, I got a question. So I was able to find a formula that did the calculation of the, the, uh, the mortgage payment. And I put that into the spreadsheet. But if we don't have that, what do you just anticipate we'll use the rental calculator to, to get this fact? Or do you expect us to calculate it in a different manner? have an amortization schedule that I can send you. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You, somebody, you send me a text that you want it, and I'll send it to you, anybody that wants it. Thank you. What else? Anybody else? All right, so in the future, I expect you guys to uh, get the answers to these now. I'm, um, this, is, this is my third go round. I'm, I'm, I want to start seeing some success. I want to start saying some right, and I want people to keep challenging me on my numbers. I made another mistake uh, last week on my uh, on my ROI, and only one person caught it. So I need you guys to do better checking my numbers. I get to running so many numbers sometimes. I, I can make a mistake. I'm getting old. I'm 60 something years old. I got arthritis. My 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 knees is hurt. All kind of stuff be happening. So y'all got to check my numbers, man. Make sure I'm right. Don't just don't be afraid to push back on me. I, I, I mean, I got thick skin. You say, Ray, you wrong? Then, hey, show me where I'm wrong. Now, if you can't show me where I'm wrong, then I'm going to push right back at you and show you where I'm right. All right? My wife will tell you that. I'm good at telling you when I'm right. All right, next. Net operating income. All right? So let's talk about what this, this is. Why, why are we even interested in our net operating income? Net operating income reflects the money that we make from the operation. This is if we were buying this property for cash and we didn't have any debt on it, this is how much operating income we would generate. So if I had put down $100,000 cash on it in this example, this is the amount of money that I would have net operating income by having put up my $100,000. But we didn't put up $100,000. Remember, we only put up 10. So uh, when I talk about net operating income, it is basically the gross rent, in this case, $1,000. Uh, and we subtract out all of our expenses, all of our operating expense, expenses except we don't include 
the mortgage. So in this particular case, we have the gross rents, then then we had all the other operating expense. We had taxes, the insurance. We had uh, we put in five percent for uh, for vacancies and the other items. All that when you subtract that from the rent, excuse me, seven hundred and fifty eight dollars and thirty three cents a month. Now to get the net annual operating expenses, we got to multiply that times 12 months because that's a monthly right there. That's after we after we do it, pay all of our expenses, everything but the mortgage, that's how much we have left a month. Multiply that times 12, we now have 9,000 in net, 9,099.96 in annual net operating income. Any questions? This is so this this tells you how, how good you're doing if you don't have a mortgage on the property. Everybody good? All right, keep rolling. Net cash flow. This is this is my number right here. This is the number that I live by. If you don't get anything else right, you need to make sure you get this right if you are a buy and hold uh, real estate investor. So we said we have $1,000 for gross rent, right? Because we use the 1% rule. And then when we subtract out our principal and interest, our taxes, our insurance, our vacancies, and our maintenance, we have on a monthly basis, after everything is paid, we have $184.51 in net cash flow for, that, for the month on this particular property. Any questions? All right, rocking and rolling. You guys are easy. You got this down. Here we go. Return on investment. Return on investment is equal to the annual net cash flows, which we already figured, right? We, we figured the monthly. All we got to do is make it an annual number. The net cash flow divided by the total investment. That is the total money that's coming out of your pocket, not what you've the bank is financed, not any, just what I'm, what's coming out of my pocket, cash money that I got to take from my bank and give it to the mortgage company. That's what my investment is. So in this case, we had $10,000 down payment, plus we have $5,000 in repairs that we paid for a total of $15,000 out of our pocket. Remember now, we financed the 3K into the loan, so that's not included in our investment because we're going to finance that out. So if we look back at our net cash flows, 184.51 times 12, so for the whole year it was $2,214 a year. If we take that $2,214 divided by the 15K that we have invested, we have MAMS and SERS 15% return on your investment. That's a mighty, mighty good return on investments. Any questions? So, Rick, can you discuss those percentages? I'm saying I know that you say 15% is good, but what are our ranges and how should we um, uh, determine, uh, I guess, necessarily good profitability versus, you know, I want to pass? So look at your assets. So tell me where in the stock market that somebody can say, I'm coming to tell you, uh, Mr. Vaughn, I can guarantee that you, if you invest $15,000 uh, in this stock today, I'm going to guarantee you that it's going to make 15% return on your money in one year. So tell me what class of assets that I can put that up against. I don't know one. I don't know one either. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, for that, because of the leverage that the bank is that you're allowed to do by only putting down ten thousand dollars and getting this return, think about it. At two thousand dollars a year, you'll have all your money back in three years, and you're basically free rolling in that property. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. All right, that is the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We completed. The deep dive on Tuesday. All right, we still we still here though. We still going. I know y'all got some questions. I'll go back over anything that you want to go over. Let me hear. Or any other questions you got?
why didn't you take it easy on us like this way before? Yeah, you explain <laughs> all that, boss man. Right. No, see, see what y'all don't understand is I'm gonna keep throwing curveballs at you. Once you think you got it, then Mr. Ray gonna slide one in on you. You ain't gonna see it coming. Gonna hit you upside the head. You gonna be like, oh, I thought I knew that. Yeah, you thought you knew it. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. But the one thing I do want to make sure you do: always ask questions, always push back, always run the numbers yourself to make sure that you're good, that you're comfortable with uh, with what's what's being presented here. Well, today was a good explanation, you know what I'm saying? This is some good footage to go back through and uh, review. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Somebody said that they do got a question in the chat. They wanted you to look at it. They don't have a microphone. Oh, okay. Let me let me look at it. Okay. Uh, it's from David. I don't understand why you calculate your down payment the way you did. I would have expected all costs to come out of the 70 k loan and only 10 out of pocket, but instead you calculated where are the closing costs not subtracted. All right, this, this is a long question. Hey, David, um, call me after the meeting. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand what the question is because the assumptions are the assumptions. I can make the assumptions anything I want. You said, um, why only 10K out of pocket? That's just a number that I pulled. Uh, it's, it's just an example. So there's no method or madness to the numbers themselves. It's just how you calculate uh, the answers. David, if you're there, give me another. Just call me afterwards, David. What else? Anybody got anything else? All right. Well, you know, um, yes, so can I'm, you hear me? I'm here. I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So what is the, uh, the monthly mortgage payment on the uh, answer to the quiz slide? You have 573.85. Right there. You see it? Right. But if you look to the right, it's showing 573.82. Really? You gonna give me for three cents? No, I, no, I, I'm, I'm just, I just got on the call. I've been having difficulties with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, he dinged I, me I, for I, two cents. Whoa. That was three cents, Bob. Oh, 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 wow, three cents, wow. You know what, I'm gonna give you a star of the day for that. Caught me, but that's a good point though. You do have to check my map. I, I'm, I'm asking you guys to do that. I transpose numbers. I get stuff before the others. I get to going so fast sometimes. Uh, so it's good to check me. Yeah, but it's the same number, uh, two to three cents off. I'll take that. And one other hey. thing, can, can we get more of these throughout the week? Or do we have yeah. to get? Well, what I do is I kind of, like this one, I put that out there and nobody got the answer right, right? So I figured, man, I'm, I'm not doing something right. So. Uh, I did this one to do the deep dive because I felt like we needed it. So I'll do them ad hoc. If I really feel like, you know, a lot of people are struggling, I'll do it. If I'm just having one or two people struggling, then I'm going to get with you individually and I'm going to help you work through it. Most everybody on this phone, you got my number. You can always call me. I chat with you. Uh, for the most part, uh, we can work most of the things out over the phone. Or we can do, like I said, this, I can take two or three people into a deep dive that don't understand without dragging everybody else that already got it through. So I'll do these on an ad hoc needed basis. Uh, if uh, you feel like we need to have uh, these type of conversations more often, that's the feedback I need. I take that in consideration and we'll do that. Hey, hey Mr. Ray. Yes. Uh, this is this is David. I, I finally got working here on my phone. Um, so going back to my question I was asking, uh, I actually have two. The first one was on the closing costs. Uh, if you look at your numbers that you figured, um, you said your ARV, and then you took the loan to value, which was the most the bank would lend, and you subtracted out the repairs to get your max allowable offer. Right. Why, why did you not subtract out repairs and closing costs 
before your uh, maximum allowable offer to get 72000 instead of 75000 as your maximum allowable offer? Because I always finance my closing costs, and we have made that. That's an assumption that I didn't tell you guys. So, and that's why I said at the beginning of the slide, you missed this, David, that I always assume that the closing costs will be uh, included in the loan because banks will put that in the loan. Banks, a lot of times, will not put repairs in the loan because that's not what they do. You know, that, that, that's a, uh, uh, a conventional loan, and most banks will only do that if it's a refi. And they'll, they'll only refi for the most part if the property is fixed up. So I never include the closing costs uh, in, in that, uh, David, but um, I hope that makes sense. I mean, you can do it that way, uh, but when you're working with me, if I give you a, a, a quiz, just assume the closing costs are always going to be financed in the loan. That makes sense? Okay, so then that, I guess, brings me to something I didn't understand. And you were saying the repairs were not included in the loan. Um, and that's interesting because I'm curious about that. I would expect the repairs to be in the loan, but you're saying that's normally not the case? The bank, unless when you first buy in a property, the bank is going to go out there and they're going to do an appraisal on that property. Their property is going to come back at, uh, at 100 k in this case. Bank says, we're going to loan you 80%. And you're going to say, fine, but I need... Uh, I need a, I not, not only do I need 80%, I need another 5,000 to go along with that. The bank's gonna tell you, no, I'm loaning you 80%. And that's it. We're, we're not giving you anything else on a new loan. Now on the refi, they'll just give you 80% of whatever it is, but you've already got the uh, repairs already done when you do a refi. When you initially buy it, it still needs repairs and banks for the most part will not finance those repairs. That's why you have to back that out, the repair number. And that's money when you're buying, when you're first buying a house, that you got to come to the table and get the house repaired. Okay, so let me talk through what, what I was assuming, and, and you can tell me where I'm at on this. Okay. So if, if they will loan you 80% uh, loan to value and 100000 ARV, they'll loan yeah. you up to 80000 Right. Right. So if I can purchase the house, and do the repairs and have closing costs for less than 80,000, would they still not include that? Yeah, it's in there. They'll do 80%, that's what I'm saying. They'll do 80% of that 100K if it appraises for 100K. But if we're buying it for, uh, for less than market value, it's probably not worth 100, 100K and the bank ain't gonna give you that. You see what I'm saying? You're never gonna get to that 100K until you fix the property up. That's after repair value. That means that after you repair, it's worth 100,000. When you buy it, it's not worth 100,000. And the bank is not gonna give you 80% of after repair because it's not repaired. Does that make sense? Um, it does make sense what you're saying, but that it doesn't jive with me as far as what our assumptions I'm looking at on the screen right there. because. You've got ARV listed as a hundred thousand, and you said right there on the screen that the bank would loan eighty percent of that. But now you're telling me that the hundred thousand is not the ARV. It is the ARV. It's after you make the repairs, it'll be the ARV. Does that make sense? So the bank the bank is going to go out and i might have to talk to you after it on this unless everybody else is confused on it too um but the bank's going to loan you on that the arv is 100k in this example if we're buying the property at seventy five thousand dollars, which i said that's what you got to buy the property at that's the maximum allowable offer is that what i said on this property so it can't it can't be worth 100k before I fix it up. It can only be worth 100K after I fix it up. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm all, uh, nobody's going to sell me a 100K property for $75,000 if it's already fixed up. Nobody's going to do that. So I'm always assuming I got to put some repairs in it to get it to that 100K. In this case, uh, in this case right here, it probably, 
probably needs more than 5k in repair to get it up to 100. If I if I only got I only pay 75,000 for it, I probably have to put more like 15,000. Again, these are numbers I'll just pull out of the air. Cuz I was looking for the calculation, not so much as trying to make it make make it fit a particular ARV or loan to value. I just I think I get see what the numbers are. I think I get what he's saying in a sense. I may be wrong, but I think what he's saying is you're saying the ARV is a hundred thousand. But say you meet the gentleman, the guy's saying he'll sell the house for eighty thousand. We work the numbers, it comes to seventy-five thousand. But how do you get to the ARV? Because the bank is saying basically, we're only gonna give you seventy-five thousand. So where are you getting the loan for the eighty percent for the hundred thousand when the guy sold you the house for seventy-five? That's uh, but that's what I'm getting confused on with when they brought that up is how are we getting this hundred thousand eighty percent of that when we're talking to guy about selling us the house and we're working the numbers like well all I'm gonna give you is seventy five thousand dollars for this house right but how can you run the numbers for a hundred thousand when you work the deal with the guy because you got to have the money to purchase the home from him and if the house isn't fixed up how are we equating that we're going off of eighty percent of a hundred thousand when the bank is like I'm not giving you the money because the house isn't fixed up. Exactly. That's what I'm. That's what I thought he was trying to say too. Okay, so let me see how much time we got. So uh, I can start another uh, another session at seven seven o'clock <laughs> if you guys want to go in into this more. I'm going approximately two minutes, and I won't be able to finish the explanation. So you guys want to go on at seven, or we can just wait and we can pick it up again. We can do that. I'm sorry, Ray. I won't be able to do it at seven, but okay. So this is if, if everybody, anybody on this line is still not understanding, then you need to give me a call and we can talk about it. Uh, either today or tomorrow. I might I might be tied up the rest of the evening, but give me a chat tomorrow. Sounds like David and maybe Don. Give me a call. Anybody else that's still struggling with that too, also give me a call. We got two more minutes for any other questions. Hey Ray, this is Jason. I just, I think where their confusion is coming in is they're seeing the ARV is where you're getting the loan from and you're not, you're getting a loan from the, the actual loan, 60,000, 68,000, not 75,000. Your 10,000 took the 75,000 down to 86,000. Right. So you're not, you're not borrowing 80% of a hundred thousand, you're borrowing 68,000, which is less than 80%. Exactly. But the I'm, only reason I'm putting the 80% out there because I know that's what the bank will give me. After it's been All right, somebody, I'm gonna mute everybody again. So that's what the, I know the bank will give me that 80%, right? After it's fixed up. Uh, but I'm free to negotiate and try to get that price down as low as I can. That's why I always want to understand what my maximum allowable offer is because it's always going to be the percentage that I think the bank will loan me, 80%, less whatever repairs I got in. I know that that's my maximum offer. That way I know I can always get all my money back that I got in the property. Everybody is clear as mud now. <laughs> anyway, so uh, give me a call. Everybody's got my number. Call me. I'll go into more detail. I think most of you have it. Still got a few out there. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you don't get it yet, I'll make sure you get it. So uh, that's going to be it for Deep Dive Tuesday. We'll see you guys next time. Talk to you later. Hey, Ray, can we get one more? Oh. Yeah, yeah there, there, there was a gentleman he'd asked earlier about getting some more, but since we went through this one this week, can we get another set of assumptions? Uh, yeah, I'm going to send out another quiz. You best believe that. Yes, sir. And I'm expecting everybody to get it right. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Talk to you guys later.